Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. If you're a regular viewer of my channel so far, you may have noticed something a little bit different about the desk setup behind me. I ended up swapping out my LG 38 GN 950B, which was a 38 inch ultra wide gaming monitor with a 21 by 10 aspect ratio to dual 32 inch 4K gaming monitors with 16 by nine aspect ratios. These monitors behind me are the LG 32 GQ 950s. I had been using the LG 38 GN 950 for quite some time and I absolutely loved it. In fact, I still love it. It was awesome for both gaming and for productivity. I'll link the review that I did for that monitor in the description below so you can go watch it after you watch this video first. However, for quite a while now, I've been thinking about going back to a dual monitor setup. It's a setup that I used previously in the past and I remember it being awesome for productivity. So secretly, I've recently missed having a second panel. As big as a 38 inch ultra wide is, it's still not quite as much screen real estate as two 27 inch monitors. I also plan to do some gaming content quite soon, so having a 16 by nine monitor to record 4K gaming footage is a big bonus for me. Now, I know that there are ultra wide purists and dual monitor purists, so not everyone will be a big fan of this change. Please don't hate me. Before I dive into the meat of the video, I want to be transparent and mention a few important disclaimers. Number one, you obviously do not need two high-end monitors for a dual monitor setup. I am very much a tech enthusiast and I tend to skew toward the extreme. Personally, I just like my monitors to be the same. If you're thinking about buying something like the 32 GQ 950 for a dual monitor setup, your second panel can be pretty much anything you like. Just try and ensure, if possible, that your second panel is at least the same resolution as your main panel. Second, I use these monitors for more than just gaming. I use these monitors for my job as a software engineer every single day. So these monitors are an investment for my daily job and the tools that I use to pay the bills. Lastly, LG did not send me these monitors. I purchased them both myself. So if they suck, I'm gonna let you know. With all of that out of the way, let's dive in. The 32 GQ 950 comes packaged well in a box with some lovely Ultra Gear branding. Inside you'll find the monitor, two part stand and accessory box. Inside the accessory box is a DisplayPort 1.4 cable, HDMI 2.1 cable, USB-B cable, and the power adapter for the monitor. There's also a little plastic clip for use on the back of the stand to hide your cables. More on that in a moment. The stand is very easy to put together. Just attach the feet to the main arm of the stand and you're done. The stand clips onto the monitor fairly easily. Side note, I made the mistake of opening the monitor box from the front. Don't do that. Open the monitor box from the back. That way you can easily put the stand into the back of the monitor. The monitor itself makes a good first impression. One of the first things I noticed is that it's quite heavy at around 25 pounds with the stand. So do keep that in mind. It weighs about five pounds more than my previous 38 inch ultra wide which is saying something. The front of the monitor is sleek and modern. It doesn't have any hard plastic around the frame, giving it a quality feel. Instead of the LG logo, the Ultra Gear name is put at the bottom center of the monitor. It has an anti-glare surface, so it's helpful if you have a bright light source nearby. It's not entirely glare free, however, and the camera likely makes it look worse than it is, but it's definitely not too bad and it didn't really bother me at all. The back of the monitor is where the 32 GQ 950 shines. This is the nicest monitor design I have seen from LG. 
At the top is the LG Ultra Gear logo with a nice purple shine to it. It's really quite cool. Etched into the back of the monitor are mini hexagonal shapes, which are very unique. Lastly, there is a hexagon shape with LED strips wrapping around the edges, which produces a subtle glow behind your monitor. This is not as bright as LG's sphere lighting that I reviewed on the 38GN950, but it still produces a subtle glow at night and looks awesome. The stand itself is decent. It holds up the monitor well with not a lot of wobble. It allows for tilt, height and pivot adjustment, but no swivel. Now, personally, I'd love to have seen swivel here for the price. There is an Ultra Gear name at the back of the stand and the feet are quite wide with the G-Sync logo on the right. The stand comes with a plastic clip to better organize your cables, which is quite helpful. Underneath the monitor is a four pole 3.5 millimeter headphone jack that gives you virtual 3D sound and supports DTS Headphone X, which is intended to deliver an immersive and cinematic sound experience. I don't personally use this, but it's there in case you want it. It is VESA 100 by 100 compatible, should you want to put this on a monitor arm. For my setup, I opted to use my current monitor arm for one of the monitors and the included stand for the other. I'm not too bothered by using the included stand in this case as my desk shelf pretty much hides the feet and keeps things looking clean. I also ended up moving my hectare lamp to the other side of the room and personally, I think it looks better there now. And if you're wondering what I did with my 38GN950, I gave it to my girlfriend. The 32GQ950 is a 31 and a half inch display with a native resolution of 3840 by 2160, which is 4K at 16 by nine. It has a nano IPS display, which is LG's technology of applying nanoparticles to the backlight of the monitor to increase the color gamut. Because of nano IPS, the 32GQ950 has a DCI-P3 color gamut of 98% and has greater than 100% sRGB color gamut. Out of the box, it has a refresh rate of 144Hz, which is overclockable to 160Hz. It also can go up to a 1 millisecond gray to gray response time on the fastest mode. Keep in mind that 160Hz is only achievable through DisplayPort. The HDMI 2.1 ports will only support as high as 144Hz. To eliminate screen tearing while gaming, it supports AMD FreeSync Premium Pro and is also G-Sync compatible, which means that this monitor also supports variable refresh rate. The monitor has a peak SDR brightness of 392 nits and an HDR peak brightness of 1012 nits with 32 local dimming zones. I'll talk more about HDR in a bit. Contrast ratio is the same old story here with LG's gaming IPS panels. A thousand to one, so don't expect anything revolutionary. It's not bad, but not great. If you're looking for a great contrast ratio, you'll still want to use something like a VA panel, or at this point, go for mini LED or OLED. For inputs, it has one DisplayPort 1.4 port, two HDMI 2.1 ports, a USB-B upstream port for powering the hub, which consists of two USB-A ports, which can be helpful keeping cables clean in your setup. I currently use one of these ports for the light bar above the second monitor, but with my previous ultra wide, I also had my webcam plugged into the other port as well. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a USB-C or a Thunderbolt port, which I would have liked to have seen at this price point. The 32GQ950 has what LG calls advanced true wide, which is intended to produce vivid and accurate colors while creating deep and dark blacks for a better gaming experience. Where this is really noticeable, however, is in the improvement of the viewing angles. The advanced true wide technology makes the image look less washed out as you view it from wider and wider angles. It also helps with IPS glow, which I'll touch on in a bit. Also on the 32GQ950 is something called VESA Display Stream Compression, which is a lossless compression that reduces the total amount of bandwidth required for an application. It allows for more pixel data to be sent over a single connection for displays like the 32GQ950 with high resolutions and high refresh rates. Note that a graphics card that supports display stream compression is required for 4K at 160Hz. I've been having 
having a great time playing games on this monitor. The colors are vivid and full. Everything is fast and the overall gaming motion experience is fantastic. With the high refresh rate and ultra fast response time, the screen has no trouble displaying what you need when you need it. Everything just feels silky smooth. I've personally been playing a lot of Doom Eternal on it, and the game looks absolutely awesome on this monitor. Other games like Far Cry 5, The Callisto Protocol, and Jedi Fallen Order all look great. Pentiment's visual art looks spectacular on this monitor as well. In my opinion, 32 inches really feels like the sweet spot for 4K gaming, and the 16 by 9 aspect ratio also feels really good here. Due to the nano IPS display and great color gamut, creative work on this monitor is as good as ever. Coming from a 38 inch ultra wide at 3840 by 1600, the pixel density for me on this display has been especially noticeable. At 138 pixels per inch, colors feel solid and crisp. Being 31 and a half inches, this isn't the biggest monitor out there, so the screen real estate is about average. However, two of these feels like it's the perfect amount of screen area for me. I've been loving going back to two separate panels, and I feel like I can actually separate what I'm doing. For example, I love being able to throw on a movie on one panel and do creative work on the other. Writing code has been great on the 32 GQ 950, as being 4K and having a high pixel density, text appears really crisp and easy to read. The menu is accessible by pressing the joystick at the bottom of the monitor. You can change the inputs and select different game modes, which configure the picture for a certain type of game. You can adjust the panel for adaptive sync, also commonly known as variable refresh rate, change the response time mode, and even add an FPS counter to your games via the monitor itself. Now, one option I would strongly recommend turning off in the menu is under general, and that is the smart energy saving feature. If left on, the monitor uses something called the luminance compensation algorithm, which adjusts the brightness up and down to conserve energy. By doing this, the monitor can visibly flicker. Trust me when I say that this gets annoying really quickly, so I'd recommend turning it off completely. It's not necessarily an issue that I've noticed while playing games, rather, I noticed it more outside of gaming while browsing the web. The 32 GQ 950 has a peak HDR brightness of just over a thousand nits, but only 32 local dimming zones. The HDR quality is okay, but it's nothing like an OLED panel. From what I've seen, your HDR experience will really vary depending on the type of content you're viewing. For HDR scenes where everything is bright, this monitor is actually pretty good with that 1012 nits peak brightness. However, for darker content and for content with both dark and bright scenes, this monitor is pretty subpar. There's just not enough dimming zones to control the smaller details on the screen. The display can get bright, but not dark and bright at the same time, which monitors need to do to be considered good HDR displays. Ultimately, HDR is the one biggest weakness I'd say this monitor has. I'd like to see LG's gaming monitors come with more dimming zones in the future to allow the monitor to control the smaller details, especially at this price. Hopefully, this isn't something that buyers will need to accept as mini LED and OLED becomes more prevalent in the future. Still, for SDR viewing, I'd say the IPS technology still works well. In fact, I'd say that the 32 GQ 950 is the best SDR monitor that I've personally ever used. It's just a shame that the HDR portion of the monitor is so subpar. If they were equal, this might just be the perfect monitor. IPS glow on this monitor is not bad at all. I don't really notice any hotspots while looking at dark areas of the screen. Obviously, this isn't an OLED panel, so the black areas are not completely black. You can see a bit of IPS glow while viewing the panel off-center, but that's expected. Overall, I'd say it's an improvement over the 38GN950 in that regard, especially with this panel utilizing the advanced True Wide Polarizer. The question then is, who should be in the market for the 32 GQ 950? Well, if you're someone who's specifically looking for a 32 inch 4K gaming display, I don't think you need to look much further right now. This monitor is likely one of the best on the market at doing just that. 
great color, fast response times, high refresh rates, FreeSync Premium Pro, G-Sync compatibility, and variable refresh rate, this monitor is simply a great gaming monitor. I've had a ton of fun playing games on this so far, and I do not regret my purchases here. For general SDR use, this might just be the best 32 inch 4K display you can buy right now. If you're someone looking for a monitor like this and are not bothered by the lack of HDR capability, this monitor might be for you. Where I have the biggest problem with the 32 GQ950, however, is the price to value ratio. Though they are great monitors, it's still hard to justify the price. In Canada, this monitor currently sells for around $1,700, which is absolutely ridiculous, especially for a monitor that performs subpar in the HDR category. If you're looking for an HDR gaming monitor, you're likely better off going with the Samsung Odyssey Neo G7, from what I've read, with that monitor currently priced about $300 to $400 cheaper. As far as a dual monitor setup goes, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, dual 32 GQ950s is overkill for most people, as you'll obviously only be gaming on one of the monitors, rendering the other one a bit of a waste in that regard. For my use case though, I love of having two of these for identical display quality, resolution, screen real estate, aesthetics, and general productivity tasks that look great with the 4K Nano IPS display. That's all I have for now, guys. If you're still here, please comment dual monitors down below, just so I can give you a like for sticking around until the end of the video. If you like this video, please hit the like button and please consider subscribing. Both of those things really help me out. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.